What's going on, nerds? Welcome back to Comic Book Nerd Nation, episode number 89. I'm Fox 2. We got Pirate. Hello, everyone. And Topher. Hello, everyone. I'm so glad you're back and we can make fun of your intro. I don't know. I'm not sure where Brian is. He must have uh, overslept or... <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. I talked to him last night. He said he was going to be here, but he's not. So if he's still sleeping. I'm kind of jealous. <clears throat> oh shit! I'm so freaking tired, man. I I wish I had a working coffee maker right now. Ouch! Since I started since I started doing this uh, this magic stuff, like Friday night magic, we've been going over to uh, Astonishing Comics and Games down there uh, on. 42 if you're from Cincinnati and and uh and playing Friday night magic but the problem is stupid tournament thing doesn't normally end till like uh like one o'clock in the morning so and I'm coming home really late going to bed and then getting up for this and just oh my god I'm tired yes Truth. I had Chuck, Chuck's wedding was last yes. night yes um, Chuck from ah. uh Comic related, comic related, which yep. is no longer a thing. Formerly of comic related, yes, yeah. and formerly of Derby City. Now of yeah. what's the complete set? That's where complete he works. Set, yeah. That's a really cool. Have you guys gotten on that website at all? Mm -hmm. I have not actually. It's pretty neat. Like as far as like if you're if you're big on collecting stuff like um, action anything. figures or comics, yeah, pretty much any kind of anything. Michael. Michael Jordan's. Like, yeah, like, yeah, literally just about anything you can collect. Michael Jordan's. Yeah. Like yeah, the shoes. Michael, Air, Air Jordans. Jordans. Whatever, same thing. <laughs> the, uh, I'm like, is there more than one Michael Jordan to collect? The um, the the website is it's really sweet the way that they've got it laid out to where you can just kind of add things to your shelf or whatever. I've I haven't spent a boatload of time on it, but I did get on there a couple times and check some stuff out. Um. All right, well let's let's jump into what we've been reading, um, Pirate. Um, what have I been reading? I don't think I read anything. I know I haven't read anything in the past couple of days. I don't think I've read anything at all this week. Dang. So, on to the next one. person, <laughs> Topher. How about you? Oh, every week it cracks me up that like. You guys have never read like have you read a comic book this year? Like has, has anybody read anything? Yeah. 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 They're all like like, yeah, let's do this comic book podcast. All right, let's talk about all the comic books we read. Well, I didn't read anything. You read it? No, I didn't read anything. It slows down then, like well there's and just like, not, first of all Then you're like, okay, Topher, what'd you read? You're like, Oh, he's gonna talk about X Men. Oh yeah. First he's, of all, there's just not that much stuff that anybody's excited about right now out. Like there's I just, disagree. I think I mean, there's for, all for stuff you. I mean, that's about. that's fine. Like you're excited about the Marvel stuff that's going on. I, I'm just not. Like, there's a couple DC things that look interesting enough that here in the next week I might try and pick up like a couple issues of like um, the last several Justice Leagues I want to pick up, and then um, Superman. I want to try and pick that one up, and then there was um, what is it? Not Robin Eternal, but uh, We Are Robin or something like that. I can't we Are Robin. That. There's two issues out, I think. Um, I think that's there's the one. There's Batman and Son. Batman and Son. That's the one I wanted to pick up. That was that's, the other that's one. That's probably the one you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, that's the one that I wanted to – that uh, that looked pretty interesting to me. And I, I think I'm, I'm just kind of waiting until I can read a few issues rather than – because there's just not enough. There's not enough that if I went to the, the comic book shop every Wednesday, most of the Wednesdays, I wouldn't even be picking anything up. Mm. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Have you guys been reading Star Wars? Because Star Wars and Darth Vader have been fucking fantastic. Have I have not. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. That's if, you're, if you're looking for something to get excited about, read that series. Because Maybe I should go back and read. Yeah, that would be a good one. There's... um. There's, there's several. There's a few different Star Wars ones. There's the Princess Leia series, which which was okay. I, I'm not gonna say it was it was amazing. Um, I enjoyed it, but it was it was nowhere near the caliber of the others. Um, Lando's uh, miniseries just started. I have not read that one yet. Um, but the uh, the Star Wars title written by Jason Aaron, who um, 
He's done all kinds of awesome shit, like uh, at least his Marvel stuff I know of. He did the uh, the first Wolverine in the X Men series, which was great. Um, he did Thor, God of Thunder, um, all throughout Marvel now, like which was awesome. That's the one where he did uh, where he had the you know the old Thor and the young Thor, and he had like the three Thors like throughout time, and like it was very very highly praised um, by pretty much everybody. Um, he. Uh, He's been um, he's been writing the the main Star Wars series, and then uh, Kieran Gillen, um, who's done okay. Well, I don't remember everything he's done. Um, he he wrote one of the X Men series, Uncanny X Men, several years back. Um, but uh, he's been writing Darth Vader, and those two books have been crossing over. Like like those two books are running in parallel. Like like the Princess Leia story actually happened like. A, couple years earlier than everything else um i don't know where the lando one fits but the star wars and darth vader series are like concurrently like um you know happening in parallel and they've both been freaking amazing like they are everything i would want a star Karen wars comic Gillen to be has re- uh, written a lot of stuff actually he's written uh he wrote a few episodes or a few issues of avengers uh versus x-men thor iron man did he finish out uh, uh, Journey into Mystery? Is he the one that was writing the, yes, the last storyline with Loki and Sif and Journey into Mystery? Journey into Mystery, um, 642 through 645. Yep. Um, Young Avengers, Original Sin. Oh. Yeah, I mean, I know he's written a bunch of stuff. I just couldn't remember exactly what it was. Um, but no, he's. Um, it's kind of cool because he's. I, I believe he's British. Um, yes, he is. And he he has kind of a, I mean the, the usual dry British style, but um, it works really well in Vader because, um, I mean all the Imperials are you know, the, I mean hell in in the freaking movies like they gave the the Imperials most of the higher ups like British accents you know because you know like they wanted to make them seem all you know. Uppity officious and superior and all this stuff, you know, like in proper and, and formal, you know. So, I mean, like a guy writing, you know, Darth Vader who, who doesn't necessarily need to be, you know, like talk a lot, you know, like it, it's it, his, his brevity is an asset when, when writing, you know, um, a character like Darth Vader, you know, um, who you have to convey so much, in in very few words um one thing i love about the darth vader book is you see a lot of things in like flashbacks like like something will happen and then darth vader will like remember something and like there'll be several panels that like there's no words it'll just be told in silent imagery and so like i I gotta credit the uh the artist um who is shall remain unnamed crap um (laughs) right well i don't have it sitting here so i I don't i don't remember um shit uh remender rick remender was writing or i mean no he was working he's not even um penciler is salvador laroca yes laroca um his his pencils have been awesome because like there there's um like there's these flashbacks. Like Darth Vader will be doing something in current time, and then like somebody will say something or something will happen, and then like the next few panels will just be like Darth Vader's inner thoughts, and there's no words. It's like a story, like told through pictures, you know, huh, like a comic book. Um, but uh, and you it's got but... it's got to be honestly, it has to be really difficult as an artist to be able to convey emotion with a character that has a full yeah. face black mask that like you can't see any kind of facial expression whatsoever yeah you know but but so you see these pictures in and in the way they show these scenes you know in flashbacks excuse me and um you know they convey so much emotion and then it just goes back to darth vader's you know present day mask blank stare and it's like oh my god like what's he feeling under that mask you know like it's 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 almost like like haunting at times like it's been so fucking good like um so those two comics like like um i I would recommend reading them kind of 
back and forth ish in the order that you know they were actually released. Yeah. Um, don't just read like all of one, then all of the other, because they, they the events do kind of like uh, um, you know back and bounce back and forth a little bit. Um, you know, so but oh my god, so yeah, if you're looking for something to get excited about yeah, and you sounds... like and you like Star Wars at all, oh, I would yeah, recommend I recommend that. Um, this is issue seven. I just picked it up yesterday on my way to <laughs> my way to the Magic Tournament. Um, so I haven't read it yet. Uh, but and last weekend I was at I was at Gen Con all weekend, so yes, I've been pretty we'll busy. Get, and we'll get into that. And have not been able to read much, but I did read one comic this week while I was sitting in a parking lot waiting for my girlfriend to finish getting her nails done so I could freaking have some dinner. Um, and that was. Um, uh, it's called We Stand on Guard. Um, it's from Image Comics. I picked it up this week, last week, I guess. Um, it's written by Brian K. Vaughn, who is the guy who writes the Saga series. Um, I think Brian guys... talked about that comic. Is that... This one? Yeah. I think so. Hold think... that cover up again. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that yeah. that's the one Did that he? Brian talked Damn about. It. Yeah. Really? I wasn't on that. Get the show <laughs> I don't think he um, was. No, I no. Because you guys always talk about you know like you know Mar- Well, we always as a group no, like, always talk, like, talk about. I actually I'm, have something. I'm just saying like Marvel or DC we usually know. talk about Marvel and DC for yeah. the most part. So. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like, right. Right. Finally, I'm like, I'm going to do an image comic this time. And you're like, yeah, Brian talked about that yeah. one last week when you were here. Fuck! original. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, I quit. Um, <laughs> So, uh, so no, this uh, this comic was um, it was it was kind of interesting. I I enjoyed it. Um, it was so the 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 premise here is that we are in the future, about I don't know, hundred ish years into the future, and um, and there are you know giant mechs, you know, and like just like the military weapons have have, have greatly progressed, and so you have like you know giant mech stuff, automated you know robotic weapon stuff. And um, and it starts with a uh, <clears throat> you know um, a family in Canada watching a news report about how some there was some kind of terrorist attack or something on the United States, um, and uh, and the U.S. decides that uh, they're going to retaliate, and they have decided that it is Canada that attacked them. And so they all of a sudden launch some huge missile strike and lead, send some giant robotic invasion into Canada um, and, like, fuck shit up. Um, <clears throat> so uh, so then the story jumps forward uh, about ten years, and it looks like, you know, Canada's kind of like some, I don't know, battleground wasteland. Uh, I don't know if the war is still going on. Only read issue one so far. Uh, issue two just came out this past week. I haven't read it yet. Um but uh, you know, so don't don't quite know what the you know the 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 whole backstory issue is quite yet. They they haven't filled in all those details, but um, definitely still a, a war torn Canada. And there's like a little resistance group of freedom fighters going around um, trying to uh, you know trying to take back what they can or fight to survive. And and they encounter like a giant mech and have to try and see what they can do to. Uh, to, to combat it, so um, it's it was kind of interesting. I, I liked it. It was the the writing was pretty decent. The characters seemed kind of cool. I mean, it's it's often hard to tell from an issue one, you know, whether something's going to be good or not. Um, but so far, it, it was interesting enough to to make me want to read more. So I I definitely picked up the second issue, and and we'll keep checking that out and see how it goes. I, I was just curious if Canada even has nuclear weapons, and it. It, I had to look this up, so it looks like they don't have nuclear weapons anymore. Nobody has nuclear weapons or me- weapons of mass destruction, ICBMs or whatever. No, I was just I was just taking issue with people who say nuclear because it's not Cause a word. Cause it drives me nuts. Because there's only one U in nuclear. Nuclear. Whatever. Uh-huh. <laughs> I take issues with little pompous pricks that have to correct everybody. That's fine. Fuck off. <laughs> Well stated. Um, this week, I read something a little different. Um, I was planning on reading some more Green Lantern, but um, 
in the mail, friend of comic book nerd nation, Gene Lewin Yang, he mailed me a copy of Secret Coders, which is his newest book, um, graphic novel, if you will, that is coming out. It will be available in September, late September, I believe, is when it's going to be released. So it's not available yet. Um, Ooh, preview copy. It's got that new new. Yeah, it's that new new. <laughs> um, it's really cool. So this is like a. Um, this is one that's geared towards kids. Uh, that is an educational comic. So it's trying to be fun and educational at the same time, and teaching the basics of computer programming, co coding, essentially. Um, the art is fun it's very cartoony not um overly like detailed like um like dc and marvel does stuff you can see here in some of the pages i'm not going to show a lot of the book um it's only the colors are black like a gray scale and green um for like accent colors uh it's a super easy read very quick i read the whole book in about an hour um but it's really cool. It's really, I like what he's trying to do. I think that this could be something that could really be uh, utilized pretty interesting, um, interestingly with like a junior high level, um, maybe even a middle school level computer class to teach the basics of, uh, of how computer programs are made or, or how computer language works. Um, in this one, it's basically... Um, teaching you about uh, how binary is done, and then, uh, and then the, I guess like the bare bones foundations of the way that a program could work, um, if it was really really simplistic. So it's, um, I like it. I thought it was fun. Uh, it was it was a nice surprise. I was not expecting. Um, I know that he mentioned long ago when he was a guest on the podcast that that um, that this was something that was in development. Um, I didn't expect to be getting one, especially before it was released. But it was kind of a a neat little surprise, and uh, I, I I think I'm going to try and reach out to him to see if we can have him back on the on the show to talk about this. Talk about he's now writing Superman for DC. Um, I've read a couple of his other stuff, uh, other books, American Born Chinese. I've read Boxers and Saints. Um, I forget there was another one that I read that was about a turtle. Um, I can't remember the name of it. Though. <laughs> I read it a long, I read it a long time ago. I can't remember the name of it. And then that one about a turtle. It's like a superhero. <laughs> Funny though, it's like that. turtle, uh, turtle themed. I can't remember the name of it. But um, he's reading Ninja Turtles. No, that, that one definitely not it. Um, all in all, what what I would what I would say is if, if you have if you have kids that are into computers um, and that are you know I don't know eight to twelve thirteen maybe even this this would be a good buy. Um, this would be a really good buy. I think the price point is going to be about ten dollars, and it's a pretty good um, length. It's about ninety pages long, so. Ten bucks for ninety pages is not bad. Um, I've paid more for some comics, that's for sure. Um, yeah, that's but that's what I read this week. Um, yeah, the Shadow Hero. Ah, yeah, that's what it's called. Yes. Um, you're gonna have to let me borrow that because. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, as a programmer, I totally want to read that. Yeah, it's <laughs> I'm pretty, like, it's I'm like, cool. oh my god, that sounds awesome. Obviously. <laughs> Topher needs to brush up on yeah. uh, on his coding. Uh -huh. Yes, it's um, it's really it's really neat the way that the way that he, I mean, you can as an adult you can read this and tell that the purpose is to teach, um, and it's you know at at the end of one chat you know at the end of the chapter it'll be like now I want you to figure out you know what this combination would equal, you know so it kind of poses a question like <laughs> almost almost like an end of chapter quiz but. Not like here, answer these multiple choice questions. You know what well, I mean? And it he, incorporates it into the into the story pretty well. Didn't um, he talk about when he was on on the, on the on an episode about how he got into it was through teaching? 
Yes. Like how he got into comic books and yes. using mm-hmm. it as a... So this is kind of like the manifestation of that. Um, and which, which he was really excited, and you could tell when we were talking to him that he was extremely passionate about this particular outlet um, for comic book uh, media, I guess is what you would call it. Not just art, but um, the, the medium of comic books as an educational tool, uh, which I think is a fantastic idea because it's going to make it a lot more engaging for children to read something that has some interesting storyline to it and some entertaining art to it uh, versus just a textbook with no pictures and just you know black and white text. You know what's funny is when I was in the uh, when I was in the army, they had a magazine. Was it a magazine? It was like a handout, and I can't remember the name of it for the life of me. But it came out, I think, weekly or monthly or whatever. But everything was based like they had trading things and trading logs and kind of like reminders about shit. And it was all comic related. Like they would have literally comics in there of Hmm. how to PMC a vehicle or something like that. Or like how to make sure your dispatch papers are properly filled out and turned into the right, you know, the right person. It was just stupid stuff. Like, but it was it was all done in in comics. Like they had that's a character that was constantly like in there. I'll see if I can hunt those down because I know I yeah, got. Yeah, that'd be interesting to house. take a look I, at. I wore the wrong shirt for this podcast, then I should I should have worn this one that I have. The, there are only ten types of people in the world: those who understand binary and those who don't. I like it. <laughs> there's only, there's only two types. <laughs> <laughs> uh see because uh, of that book like my, my my nerd jokes are funny and in context yes yeah, see <laughs> now that is how you drop a nerd joke well That's done how you get me excited. well <clears throat> done um okay let's shift gears and let's talk a little bit about uh gen con topher was at gen con last week um and was. how was it it was it was great. It was um, it's always a good time. I've I've been going since two thousand eight was the first time I went. Um, so I mean like, um, if you've never been to a convention, like conventions are just awesome. Like the first time you go, it's it's <laughs> a, a couple of friends of mine went out for a day this year and, and they walked around for a little while and then <laughs> at one point it was funny they came up to me and they were like, so like. After you go through, like, we were in the exhibit hall, you know, like, where there's just rows upon rows of booths with, you know, people, you know, selling stuff, demoing games, all kinds of stuff. And um, and they were like, so we were going to get, like, a, 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 we noticed you got the four-day pass. Like, we, we looked at looked around and, and thought, well, we can probably, like, you know, one day is probably fine. Like, after you go through here, like, what what uh, what is there really to do? <laughs> and I just laughed because, like, I've been going to Gen Con for for several years now, and every year I go and I do it like completely differently. Like there's just so much stuff to do that like one year I'll be like, oh, I'll focus on this stuff, and then like by the end of the weekend I'm like, oh, I didn't even get to do like you know all this other stuff, you know. So like there's just so much stuff to do, and until you've you've been once and 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 seen it, like it's really hard to believe how much stuff really goes on. Now like I I know um as opposed to like some comic conventions um like i've been to a few comic conventions nothing super huge like san diego's um you know and there are panels you know where people talk about stuff and events but a lot of it is um i would say a lot of it is more like viewing you know you're more of an observer um at a lot of comic cons um gen con being about games is is just so much more interactive like um Every day they have the exhibit hall open from, you know, like 10 till 6. Um, but even in the off hours, there's just so much stuff to do. Like, um, you can sign up for events. There were over 6,000 events at Gen Con this year. And a lot of them were like little, um, you know, like little six-person games. But, you know, like you can sign up to play a session of like a tabletop RPG 
or um, you know, or play test a board, a new board game, or um, you know, pretty much any game that's there, somebody's probably running a few sessions of, and you can get you know, sign up for tickets to you know, like a four-hour session of playing Pathfinder, or you know, and it'll be like some one-shot little thing where they'll give you a character, a pre-made character to run, and um, you know, and then you'll spend four hours playing like just a one-shot adventure of some game or like a two-hour board game session or <clears throat> or something like that you know there's there's just so many things going on um there are other halls where they're running you know magic tournaments like pretty much all weekend long like all hours of the day we did one on friday night till like it was like an overnight tournament um till like 3 a.m we sat there and, and played in a tournament and uh there were so many people there. Um, I I went two and two, um, so that was that was the minimum you had to do to, to earn prizes. So I, I got some I got some free uh, some free booster packs from it. But um, how did your girlfriend do? Uh, she huh, it's kind of a sore subject actually because there was one guy who was kind of who was kind of being a dick. Um, and most of the most of the community is is fairly nice and helpful and stuff, you know. Um, she she won her first match, but then lost the uh, lost the next two, and then the final game, you had to you had to be at least two and two to uh, um, to win prizes. She was she and her opponent were one and two going into the final match, and um, like you play you play the best of three. They each won one, and it was in the third game, and. Um, there's a time limit on the rounds though and so once it gets to a certain point like you have just like five turns to finish out and if the game doesn't finish it ends in a draw well the guy was gonna lose like there was no doubt about it like he was pretty much fucked um, he knew it everybody knew it um, but instead of taking his turns and letting her win out like he would sit there and he'd be like, uh, "How much time's left in the round?" And they'd be like, "You know, ten minutes." Oh, okay. And he'd sit there and stare at his cards for like three minutes, and then he'd like play one card. How much time's left in the round? Like seven minutes. Oh, okay. And he'd sit there and just stare at his hand for like minutes on end. And people were like, "Dude, come on, just like fucking play." And he like refused to lay a card down. He's like, "Oh, I'm I'm still thinking." And so he basically like sat there and just delayed so that he would force a draw when at that point there was no way he could win or get anything and pretty much all he was doing at that point was screwing her out of like 20 bucks worth of prizes so wow, that sucks. Uh, so yeah he was kind of a dick and then like later on um she mentioned it to a couple of the the guys in a booth we were frequenting that were selling cards who were actually part of the uh, tournament organizers and she's like and, and they were like why didn't you tell us like we cracked down on that stuff hard like that's that's a that's a dick move and she's like well you know we, we've never done like a you know like a big regional tournament kind of thing we didn't want to like you know throw a fit over and they're like no that's that's not acceptable like we we, we would have kicked that guy's ass so um so yeah i mean what was your um, favorite part of the show this year oh boy god um Wow, that's good, huh? <laughs> no, I mean, I, there's, there's. I'm trying to think of like somebody asked me this the other day, and I had an answer for them, and now I can't remember what it was. And that, I mean, there has to be really like awkward. one thing that stood out above the, you know, above the rest. The beer garden. <laughs> there was a beer garden. You know, it, it's it's <laughs> it's cool because like several years ago. Um, you know, like it, it. You had to like do concession stand food or whatever, or or wander pretty far away from the convention center and and wait like an hour on a line somewhere at a restaurant to get some food or, or pack your own lunch. But yeah, um, the last few stuff. years, they've been lining up food trucks around the nice. block, like outside. And uh, Sun King Brewery, it's based out of Indianapolis, like sets up like a little beer garden there. A couple years ago, I actually had a beer with Will Wheaton, um, oh, walked nice. out there, and, and he was he was standing out there, and um, and I got a beer and turned around. I'm like, "You're Will Wheaton," and he's like, "Yes, I am." <laughs> and we started talking about like, you know, the Star Trek version of Settlers of Catan and whether there was ever going to be a next generation expansion with, uh, with, with his character with in it. Um, yeah, <clears throat> which, which this year now there is actually. So, um, but uh, I'll, I'll have to think about that when I get back to you. Um, 
Uh, there's the the whole weekend's pretty awesome. Like I, I know it's like you can't even think of a favorite part. Like, no, like I I'm trying to think of I'm trying to think of something that like really just stands out. I mean, like the whole weekend is super fun. I think that, Last that goes year, to show that that the whole event. That, like there wasn't just one thing that was really enjoyable. The whole event was enjoyable. Yeah, you know, like there's and there's stuff to do like constantly. Like all the ho- there's so many like hotels within just a block or two of the convention center. And while they charge out the ass for rooms that weekend, um, like even even once the exhibit hall closes down and you leave and you go to one of your scheduled events, even if you don't schedule for any events, like there's there's a couple halls where. You can go and like for a couple of tickets, you just you can sit there and rent games like all night long. Like you can like like oh let's try out that one. They'll hand it to you. You know they'll send somebody over. Do you know how to play this game? Do you want you know somebody to show you you know how to play? Yeah sure, and they'll do that. And then like halfway through the game, now this game sucks. Let's get a different one. They're like okay, and so you take it over there to the table and you trade it out and you say let's try that one. You know like you can do that like you know all night long practically. Um, or you go back to a hotel room and or, or to a hotel and like every hotel lobby around there, the tables are just packed with people like, you know, playing all their new games that they picked up or, or playing random stuff. And you walk past and somebody will be like, hey, like, hey, ever play this? You guys want to join? You know, and it's like it's just it's a really cool atmosphere because everybody's there to have fun. Everybody's there to like play games and do stuff. And um, cat, stop walking on my comics. Move. <laughs> and like. <clears throat> And so, like, everybody's super friendly, except for that one dick in the Magic Tournament. And, um, you know, like, last year, we walked out of um, out of uh, Mayfair Games um, Hall. They're the ones that do Settlers of Catan. And, you know, where we did all the renting of board games and stuff. Like, you know, like, oh, let's try that one. Um, well, when they clo- finally closed down at midnight, we came walking out. And um, we were like, well, I guess we'll go back to the hotel, maybe maybe play some games there or something, or maybe get some sleep. And right as we walk out, there were a group of people standing up. They were packing up their Cards Against Humanity box. They were just sitting out in the hallway playing. And, um, and I was like, oh, Cards of Humanity, Against Humanity, awesome. Like, you know, which, which expansion is that? Because they had a card I hadn't seen before. And they, we start chatting, and he's like, you guys want to play? And we're like, oh, you guys were just packing up. He's like, yeah, we were packing up because we were playing with some little kids that wandered up, and we were kind of trying to get rid of them. He's like, but if you guys are joining, we'll sit back down again. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> we were awesome. like, okay. So we sat down, and we played Cards Against Humanity with some random people that we had just met on the spot until, like, 3 a.m. Like, people were walking past and stopping and going, oh, Cards Against Humanity, they were like, join! And, and they were like, you know, oh, I don't want to butt in on your game. They're like, no, none of us have ever met each other. Sit down! <laughs> and they're like, okay. You know, so we sat there and played, like, yeah, like, there were like a dozen of us by the end all just sitting there playing Cards Against Humanity. That's fun. Like, That's awesome. Making up horrible shit until 3 a.m. So, um, yeah, I mean, the, the convention's a great time. Like, I, 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 it's one of the highlights of my year, every year, um, is, is making that trip out there and and, uh, and getting to play all kinds of fun new games and see what's out there. So that's awesome. I, I highly recommend it for anybody who hasn't gone. It's it's a it's a very it's a very different and a, and a experience from uh, from like a comic convention because of the you know the interactive nature of it and getting to play. Like even just walking through the exhibit hall, like everybody's eager to sell you their stuff. You know, so they've got demos sitting out. It's like, oh, you guys you guys want to play a game? It's like yeah, that's why I'm here. Like, sit down, we'll show you this one. You know, it's just, it's just, it's, it's a lot of fun. That's pretty cool. So that'll be our tabletop game of the week section. So well, I'm watching a boss. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> I so, take it back. I take it back. That's the highlight of my there week. You go. Listening, to, um, listening to pirates intro and outro music every week. Let's uh, <laughs> let's change gears and talk about news. We got a couple things that uh, I, I want to talk about before we um before we end for the finish up for the week uh sorry my neighbor's dog is freaking out and apparently now my dog is freaking out dogs are awesome um it's okay they just started cutting grass out out there so yeah i could hear it it was getting pretty loud (laughs) while you were talking um so here is okay i'm sure at this point both of you have heard about the lion that got killed in Africa or Zimbabwe. Um, yeah. Cecil, Cecil, the lion. Um, I'm not going to get into the politics of whether that's right, wrong, indifferent. I, everybody has their own opinion and that's fine. But this is a little bit more tangentially um, related to 
the comic book nerd world um, that we're obviously fond of. Um, there was a picture that was taken back in the 90s of Steven Spielberg uh, in front of the the sick Triceratops from the Jurassic Park movie. I'm sure you guys remember mm -hmm. how it's kind of like laying on its side. Well, Steven Spielberg posed for a picture in front of this thing. And it looks very reminiscent of like a trophy hunting photo. Okay. And that was kind of the, the gag of it was like, hey, you know, like I killed this Triceratops. That was the like gag of the whole thing. Well, because of the big dust up over the Cecil situation with the lion, there were some people on YouTube that decided to take this old photo of Steven Spielberg and walk around the streets of New York, I believe it was, and interview people and get their opinion on what they thought about this situation. <laughs> <laughs> and the fucking responses were just god awful. I mean, just it makes me sad to be part of humanity. Did they think uh, like the, they thought the it was a rhinoceros? Was... Oh, they thought it was so a rhinoceros. So many people said, "Oh, why would why would he kill such a rhinoceros? Such a beautiful rhinoceros." It's and 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 the interviewers were kind of playing that up and try telling people that it was a rhinoceros and things like that. Oh. And so there were some people that were like, "Ah, oh, no, that's definitely a triceratop. Like that's definitely <laughs> this is definitely not real." Uh, but there was people that were legitimately like, I can't believe that. He looks so proud of himself. This makes me sick to my stomach. Like, okay, I understand if you have a point of view, an opinion, um, and you're really, you know, heartfelt about it, and, and you're an animal rights activist, that by all means, that's perfectly fine. You're committed to your cause, and... You know, someone killing a lion does actually make you really sick to your stomach and, and you're just really upset about it. But clearly, if you're looking at a picture of Steven Spielberg sitting in front of an animatronic Triceratops and you're saying that you get upset the same amount over that as you do about this lion, you're full of fucking shit. Because you clearly don't well, even know what the animals what, are. How can you care I, about an animal if you don't even know I, what it is? I think it's funny that like 90% of the people who are upset about this animal can't look at a map of Africa and point where Zimbabwe is. You know, the other... like, for, Okay, for starters, like, I didn't really want to get into the politics of the whole lion thing, but people are, are calling him like, oh, he's so gentle, he's so beautiful, he's this, he's that, like... There's film footage of that exact lion eating chill, eating like baby lions. Like that's what male lions do. They eat their babies. Like they that that lion, as old as he is, is probably eating 30, 30 fucking baby lions. I mean, he's, that's part he's of, a lion. That's, really, they do that. Yes, yes, they absolutely do that, and and that's part of like we're so far removed as a culture away from what nature is, what animals really are and like what really happens out there in the wild like sure you can sit here in the comfort of your own home on facebook and look at some picture of a lion and say oh wow that's really pretty he's so cute blah 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 whatever but if you were out there standing right next to that motherfucker that weighs 1300 pounds or whatever you're going to be shitting yourself you're going to be terrified you would want to kill that thing in a heartbeat like well. Well, it, there's there's also a difference between defending yourself and seeking out some animal to just kill for the hell of it. I, I but don't, the biggest I don't the biggest tragedy here in killing him is that I, I now I kind of wanted to ask him how baby lion tastes, and I'll never get that chance. <laughs> just ask any <laughs> other male lion out there. Oh, okay. I think I mean, it's you know I think it I've all never had out. baby lion. It kind of sounds delicious. Um, <laughs> I've uh, I'm not a big fan of sport hunting at all i think it's pointless even even if it's you know even if it's something as simple as like deer i, I think to me it's pointless i i'm for hunting i have no problem with people that hunt i think that you know it's just another way to go to the grocery store but i think if you seek out pay these big money like you know i think anybody who has sixty thousand dollars to go out hire guides you know have them take them you know set up a, a trap pretty much to, I mean, I don't even like my salt only licks problem, and stuff. You my know, only like, problem with it is that 
though I don't have any problem with like it, it's it's survival of the fittest. It's the food chain. It's uh, sure. the basis of evolution. Um, I mean that that's that's what it is. If they could hunt us, you better fucking believe they would, and they right. do. They, oh yeah, they've they, done they, it. They definitely it, those male lions out there terrorize the local villagers. They eat people. That shit happens. They hunt humans. Yeah, all this not is, as much is, as they used to. But no, but it ha- it has happened and it, it, it and does, it will right. happen again. Uh, right. You know, my, I have no problem with it. My only problem with th- that particular scenario is the fact that they lured the lion off of protected ground to kill. Right. It. You know, the lion was the lion was in a reserve. They lured it off the reserve, which is legal to kill the lion if it's off the reserve. But they went to it on the reserve, lured it off the reserve, then killed it. Right. You know, that's I'm really hope- that's the only questionable thing in my mind. I'm really hoping that this story is relevant and that you now want to hire a trophy hunter to go like get a triceratops. No, to go get the heads of like, you know, the Fox studio executives who put out another <laughs> terrible, fantastic four movie. And that is a perfect segue into our next news story, which is fantastic Four. who has seen it. Has anybody here on this no. panel seen it? No, it just came out. Well, as we're recording Thursday. this, it just came out last night. Well, okay. Thursday at midnight, but whatever. Um, it's pretty much been out for a day and a half now. And I have I some statistics, it, but the reviews have been in and they've not, uh, Fantastic Four <laughs> is currently sitting at a 10% approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes. On Rotten Tomatoes, yeah. Uh, originally, they were projecting for the opening weekend to be 50 to $60 million. Uh, the numbers have been so shitty, they've lowered that down to $40 million. Uh, on Thursday night, I believe... Jesus Christ. Is there a freight train in your backyard, Topher? What the fuck is I that? Know. I know. Sorry. Oh, my God. It sounds like the mothership from Independence Day. It's Yeah. Seriously. Um, the Thursday, opening night, Thursday night, it made $2.7 million, which is actually fairly respectable. Um, the that's budget, two point seven more million dollars than I made this week. That's <laughs> not a lie. Um, the uh, the budget for the film was one hundred and twenty million. So they have a long way to go before this movie ma- actually makes any money. Um, I haven't read a single good thing about this movie, and that doesn't surprise me at all. I read one review where the person said that it feels like a hundred and twenty minute trailer where you're just waiting for the movie to start. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I was like, oh, my God. That is a, just a fucking downright kick to the nuts. Oh, that's awful. So, I don't know. I, I guess when Brian comes back next week, we'll have to talk to him and see if he's seen it. I, I'm not going to pay money to see it. I'll watch it when it's on, like, Netflix or something in a month because it fails so horribly. But, um. Yeah, That. that's just... I mean, I mean I, going into this, we kind of knew we had a reservation saying like, oh, shit, you know, what yeah. I mean? like, <laughs> that it, it, do, it does like and a lot of the pictures that I'm seeing of it and just like the still captures of like it and or uh, is it thing or it? it's thing 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 it, just really. Yeah, I, I don't read really? much Fantastic ben? Four. Is it Ben? Ben Grimm. Yeah. Ben, ben Grimm, yeah. The, the thing? The thing, yeah. That's, I don't know why. Yeah, whatever. But speaking of that, where is... Adam's family. Where is... It, the, yeah. the giant where, hairy guy. <laughs> have you guys seen all the things everybody's talking about? Like, where is things thing? Like, what happened to his dick? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because like, oh he doesn't God. wear pants. And he's just like, got nothing. It's yeah. hilarious. Got no thing. I, got no I thing. Can, I can say one good thing about the movie... And that hopefully it, it was. And, no <laughs> one's, okay, too good. No thing. one's forced you to watch it. <laughs> I I haven't wasted any money on it. Um, and and two, hopefully it'll be so bad that they sell the rights back to Marvel. It could be yeah. this. I mean, this is this is bad. This is really like big budget, major director. You know, like who was supposed to be able to do something good with it. You know, like uh, they had all kinds of to ammunition you here, you know, they had all kinds of weapons at their disposal and they, they gave it their best shot with a high budget, with a with a good director and, you know, in the modern era 
and still falling flat. Like, just give up already, the, please. Here's the here's the here's the comparison that's really a telltale sign. Um, to compare to to Marvel, the most rele- uh, recent released major comic book based film is Ant Man. Which was not bad. Which was, which was really good. I which, enjoyed that. Is not Ant Man is yeah. not like an A list character. He's just in the in the general public's eye, he's not. He's not to the tier of like Batman, Iron Man. Um, for comic book fans, everybody knows who Ant Man is. But I, I wouldn't put Ant Man on the same tier as as like a Superman or a Batman. Hell no. But Ant Man did over twice as much on opening night as Fantastic Four. I would put Fantastic Four on the same tier as like a Superman, Batman, because they are that iconic. Well, plus well, they've already had Cinematically, it's now. fucked, but... Well, it, to, to be fair, though, the Fantastic Four... Okay, Fox's track record with movies has not been as good. Fuck. The fan, last Fantastic Four movie fell flat fucked. on its face. And Marvel Studios, everything they've been doing is awesome. has been fucking like printing money, you know. So, uh, on a, from an opening night perspective, I don't know that that was a fair fight to begin with because Probably just the not. fact that it's a Marvel movie and they're going to say Avengers in it, but you in know, six minutes. I mean, or er, six minutes, six months. We can go back and look at the total, you know, total. Oh yeah, sales, definitely. I mean, it's, the, it's still the gonna be. Yeah, I'm sure the totals are still going to be skewed well in the favor of Ant Man, but you know, opening night. I mean, let's let's be honest. Marvel movie, Marvel could you know release you know, Turd the musical you know <laughs> by Marvel Studios, and like people be like, yeah, I'm going to check it out. I mean, they haven't let me wrong yet. Why not? You know, <laughs> let's go watch <laughs> that Turd. I got to see what the next chapter is with the Avengers storyline, you know? <laughs> right. Like the deuce of Captain tra- America. Two. <laughs> is this turn going to be on the Avengers next? <laughs> <you know>? like, <laughs> yeah, and you know what's funny is if they did that, you're going to have some comic book guy being like, oh, you don't know who Turd Man is? <laughs> right. Know? Like he's, I, I've read all his books from the, I have all his books from the 60s. He was, he was real big in the Bronze Age. You know what I mean? Like, uh, there's, right person that's going to try to justify it some way so okay. yeah i mean like marvel could say just about anything and, yeah. and you know people are going to line up to go see it i mean look at guardians of the galaxy last year that's yeah. been one of their biggest hits to date like universally praised by everyone and like everybody <laughs> loved that movie it was a great movie and nobody like outside of hardcore comic book fans had had ever even freaking heard of them. Like, you know, prior to prior to all the hype about that movie, like even uh, even most comic book fans would be hard pressed to name all, you know, the the five characters, the five main characters in that movie. I bet they couldn't do it. Right. You know? Uh the next bit of news, Topher, I know you're going to be excited about this one. Fox is officially in negotiations for an X-Men television show. I'm mostly excited, except for that first word you said. <laughs> fox. fox. <laughs> They're gonna fox it up. Uh huh. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, I I honestly think that TV is is a would be a perfect. I'd be a better medium um, for the X Men. I think it'd be a perfect medium for the for the X Men. Um. You know, I mean, it can do more of that soap opera shit that you love. I mean, yeah, it's basically a a comic book soap opera. It's a serialized. You know, it's a graphic novel soap opera. Um, so yeah, I think it's a great format. But everything Fox does, they try and make it like they either try and rob all the life. Out. Oh my God, we have a Brian. <laughs> we have a Brian. I'm awake. I'm alive. Good, good morning, beautiful. <laughs> Do you sleep all right? I look really white yeah. in my camera. Do you have yes. some ice dreams? I dreamt about lollipops and sugar plums. Mm, that sounds <laughs> nice. Um, <clears throat> all right, I'm going to move us on to the next topic. Uh, NASA Federal Credit Union is teaming up with the C- uh, with okay. CBS Consumer Products to release four different designed 
Star Trek credit cards. What? Why yes. can't we have Star Wars credit cards? There's going right? to be four different credit cards that have Star Trek designs on them. Um, let me see if they have names. The Starfleet Academy Alumni Card, Starfleet Command, United Federation of Planets, and the Captain's Card. Wait a minute. Uh, first, My first question is, who the fuck... Like, NASA is a bank, too? NASA? It's NASA. NASA? I, I know, but it was NASA. that was a trailer park boys reference. Okay. That's NASA. NASA they got nuclear own, weapons. You don't own space. NASA owns space. NASA owns space. <laughs> uh, but no, they, they're, they're a bank... As NASA well, federal credit union. Yeah. I mean, so I can. Just, why don't I like have the a, United States military has a credit union? The, well, yeah, but so, but same, that, my point is like idea. you can't get into it. The fraternity. Like, unless you're an I, astronaut. I, I want to be. I want to be part of this bank. I, like, would, I want these I, cards. I would say that you do not have to be employed by NASA to. You guys are a lot of times can't... be part of the bank. You're already part NASA of FCU bank. plans to have these cards available in September. And are accepting applications now. You can apply a lot of at nasafcu.com slash Star Trek. NASAFU dot yeah, NASA fuck off dot. Um, <laughs> okay, and the last bit of news we've got this week uh, before we wrap things up Wally West for the Flash TV show has been cast. Uh, he will be played by. Keenan Lonsdale that was in Insurgent. I have not seen that movie. It's a good movie. Uh, he's currently slated for 10 episodes and the CW has said that he will be playing Kid Flash from the New 52 not the original uh, Wally West. Um, I don't know much about the Kid Flash Wally West um, character but the name Kid Flash makes me think that the actor should be a kid. Uh, and this dude looks like he's about 24 years old. Um, I don't like it. I think it's well, kind of you know, uh, I think Wally before, West is like 16 in the in the new 52 or something. Is, wait, is Wally West Kid Flash in the new 52? Because wasn't Wally he, West older? He's not a kid. Originally? He's not like he's not kid. He's not like Kid His Flash. Name is kid Flash. His name is Kid Flash. Uh, well, I don't read the new 52 Flash. So I don't know, but I know he, like there's an actual kid Keenan Flash, Lonsdale which will be is joining the Flash this winter in the role of Wally West, an iconic character from the Flash universe who became the speedster known as Kid Flash. Said in CW. the in the original in the original continuity before the New Fifty Two, Wally West became Kid Flash, and then when Barry Allen died, he later on became the flash in the new 52 he's not even he doesn't even wear like the yellow suit that no, everybody's thinking about yeah but there's a, also a kid flash that's part of the teen titans that's looks like wears a costume that's closer to the kid flash of the old 52 and that wally west from the new 52 wears the silver and red he just, he's only been in New 52 for a little over a year, I think, too. Yeah. It was, he came, out, under. He came out, it was in the annual, not the, not last year's annual, but the year before, when they brought Wally West back. You know, you know say he, he had a name. You say he doesn't look like a kid to you, but it's funny, before, before Brian showed up, what I was about to say about the X-Men show was that, you know, like, Fox has this, this tendency to, like, make all the characters younger and turn everything into some teen high school melodrama. So like I'm I'm kind of okay with, you know, shows not necessarily, you know, like if you look at what Flash or Arrow are doing, you know, like they're they're making the characters a little bit older and a little bit more mature and you can still have comedy and 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 levity in in situations and whatnot, you know, without having everything be like, you know, a bunch of teenagers for everything. So like I'm I'm okay with them doing that, and and I I hope Fox you know takes some takes some pointers on that, and and, and doesn't yeah, just you know, make some disagree, you know, complete my problem is teen like, high school drama. My problem is though, if you're gonna have a character that's called Kid Flash, he should be noticeably at least younger 
than right. Flash. Than Barry well, Allen, who already, already looks Flash pretty young. Flash already looks like he's 15, and this kid looks <laughs> right. at least as old as, as uh, what, what's his name, um, Grant... Uh, Gustin. Grant Gustin. Grant Gustin. He looks easily as old as him, maybe even older. I, yeah, I don't understand how you can have a really baby-faced well, Flash and then We're all getting call ahead of ourselves because the article says that the character in the comic books was called Kid Flash, not that they're calling him Kid Flash in the show. He yeah, was just he's he was just casted as Wally West. We don't know even know if he's going to be super powered yet. No, it's no. Keenan Lonsdale, they, here's the statement from CW. Keenan Lonsdale will be joining the Flash this winter in the role of Wally West, an iconic character from the Flash universe who became the speedster known as Kid Flash. Yeah. Right. But he's saying joining as comics, Wally West, became... who in the comics was called Kid Flash. He might e- they might even give him the impulse okay. name for the T V show. Yeah. Go with the uh the Smallville tactic. Lonsdale's yeah. casting puts West portrayal more in line with the new fifty two version of the character who is African American, like the actor. Yes. Rather than the red headed Caucasian like the original Wally West. So do. I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and see, but I you mean ha the only thing I just think of is like none of their casting has ever been bad. Terrible. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so they've got to know what they're doing. And if you yeah. guys have seen, if you guys seen the um, the hype reel that they sent out about Flash season two, and it showed the speedster with the blue streaks. Everybody knew Wally that's West. Probably him. You know, because yeah. I mean, in the new Fifty Two, he's got the blue streak. So. Well, there's also they're also saying that somebody uh, could become that dude from uh, the uh, old, not New Jay, Fifty Two, but Jay the, not Jay Garrick. He's definite, but um, there's another speedster called uh, I think Cobalt Blue or something. Oh or Cobalt. yeah, yeah. Hmm. They said that there's going to be multiple speedsters, which yeah. is probably going to have to do with when they opened up. The um, the butthole in the sky. Yeah, the fucking. <laughs> it's gonna shit out speedsters, I guess. There's my poop joke for the day. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta On get that one. Note, that's about all we've got this week. Uh, <clears throat> we'll see you guys again next week for episode ninety. I'm Fox Two. We got Pirate. See you guys. Tover. So I remember a cool thing from Gen Con. It was a uh, it was a Mutants and Masterminds game I played in that was a DC versus Marvel in- thing that was kind of interesting. The Kid Flash reference just reminded me. So remind me to tell you about that one next week. Will do. And the whole F and Brian. That was a long goodbye. So I'm just going to say goodbye. <laughs> it would have been a shorter goodbye if you didn't say that you were going to say goodbye and just said goodbye. Goodbye. Stop thinking. 